Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. All right. I know you're cold, but it's okay. We're warm over here. Take your hymnals in front of you and turn to 469. 469. Leaning on the everlasting. Oh. <laughs> He knows why you're here. So please uh, 
We pray that uh, the Holy Spirit bless each one of you guys this morning. Look around, those ones that are not here, give me a call. Not to find out why you're still here, just to say hi, we miss you. You know, we, we, we concern about you. Please keep it in mind, it's, it's a big uplifting when somebody uh, get a call and they have to say, hey, I don't saw you Saturday. Please do so. I mean, don't take it like it's a big blessing. Maybe the Lord is using you to bring that person in and to uplift things spiritually. You want to go to Africa to preach. That might be your, your minister in this church. Uh, going through, we're going to kind of quick. Uh, keep your uh, solar phones down, please. Uh, you put them in my mute or shut them off. I mean, while we hear this uh, holy temple, praising God. Also, church board meeting will be tomorrow. Here, ne I mean, next Sunday. We'll be next, this, this, next Sunday, 10 o'clock right here. Those uh, board members, be sure that be on time and so they can get, take care of business for the Lord here. Also, fellowship lunch will be next Saturday. Please remember, bring something to share with others. Some of the, nice, all the goodness, the best you can. So bring it over, even it's as simple as it can be. Just bring something, or if not, just come up. Please stay, make plans to stay here worshiping and fellowship with, uh, with the children of God, the family of God here. Also, our, uh, our church offers Thanksgiving gift cards to those ones that are in uh, distress or any kind of need. Don't take it light. We're here for each one of you guys. I mean, things sometimes that look like they are. So please, if you know somebody else too that they may be embarrassed or they might be a little shy, let us know that our church member, our church has some kind of a little, some gift cards they can make it a Thanksgiving a special time. Um, any church, any, any, if any need your assistant, please call the, uh, get in contact with the pastor, Pastor George, or the elders, uh, Al, or with Jones. Also, there will be a young adult, um, youth pastor meeting next Friday at 7. Please, those young people, don't miss this one. It's a big blessing. In Puerto Rico, there are more people going to the vesper meeting in Saturday night, I mean in Friday night, that is in actually Saturdays. In Friday there's more people. The unbelievers pass by the seven to churches in Friday in, 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 in all of them. And they think it's a wedding or some kind of big commitment thing going on, a campaign. No, it's just best for people, best for the children of God, the young people. So make a priority of that. Try to keep it up. Uh, the speaker next time, next Friday will be uh, Pastor Rocky who is speaking. So that will be very special. Uh, the nominee committee, uh, first meeting is next Sabbath at 4 o'clock. So if you are selected, be there after. That will continue. That's another announcement. We are having a church Thanksgiving breakfast. So those of them are family far away, they cannot travel, they, they cannot kind of stay in San Antonio for any reason, they work, or they, they don't have the needs. Remember that you have your church family here. And we love each one of you guys. They might not tell you all the time, but we love you. And we like to spend those special hours, special moments, family, get closer together with our church family. So please, let to make it up. It will be next, next uh, Thanksgiving day in the morning at uh, between 9 to 11. So you got time to spend with your family or something else, your plans. But between 9 and 9, at uh, 11 o'clock, we'll be here in Thanksgiving, uh, for Thanksgiving breakfast. May the Lord bless each one of those. Please keep Miss Day, uh, a patient approached me yesterday, Miss Day, uh, Miss Gloria, and, and Debbie. She is bleeding, to, uh, then they can't stop the bleeding. She told me to please, uh, we start to talk, and so she found out that was Adventist, and she said, please pray for me. And I told her today at 11 o'clock, we keep her lift in prayer. They don't, they better make it for, by Monday, they expect me to surgery on her. It's a giant surgery. So it requires some prepare, prepare, preparation for it. So please keep it in mind. I'm continue praising, uh, praising, uh, praying for each other in these coming days. May the Lord bless each one of the, uh, each, each one of the members. Thank you. So in a moment, you're going to hear Pastor George talk about uh, the sheet that's in your bulletin uh, pertaining to the nominating committee. The one thing I wanted to let you know that if you are nominated and if you do accept an office, um, the calendar for next year is going to be put together in the coming weeks. So we'd like to uh, get you get get your ideas for what we want to do for next year 
to get that stuff built and put on the calendar so we can make things as predictable as possible for our members. And also, really quickly, um, do this every year, just want to make sure that if you do not have anywhere to go for Thanksgiving, you are more than welcome to come to my house. Uh, my wife and my family would love to have you. Uh, just let me know before that so we can make uh, preparations for you. Um, uh, but we would love to have you. We don't want anyone here to have to be on their own on Thanksgiving. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Brother Jones. Thank you, Hamilton. We're going to do something that we never done before this time. Let me ask you, how many of you are uh, members of Emmanuel? I need to see your hands. Okay, keep, uh, keep it up, keep them up, please. Have you received the sheet for the uh, selection of the nominating committee? Yes. Everyone? Okay, good. So this is what we're going to do. Because we have so many new members, I'm going to call the name of the person up, and I'd like that person to stand so that when you make a, de a decision, you know who you're putting down. All we need is mark five names. Five. And from those names, we will select uh, five plus two alternates. So, to begin with, I don't see Alex here. Alex Grant. Next one is Alvin Campos. I don't see him here. Uh, Brandon is not here. Uh, where? Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. Brandon, can you stand? So that's Brandon. Uh, if you want to elect him as a, a member, and I would like to have some youth Amen. instead of all adults. Amen. So you're welcome to select uh, Brandon. Uh, the next one, it's a uh, type error, it's Carlos Tropuco. Carlos, stand please. They need to see, that's Carlos. Thank you. Charlotte Bellamy is not here. Chris Romo, he's in the back, that's Chris. Okay, uh, Diane Cock. That's Diane. Uh, Eddie Martinez. That's Eddie Martinez. Uh, and uh, Elsie Martinez is not here. Uh, Elaine. That's Elaine at the piano. Uh, for Typho. Not here yet. Okay, Felicia Angerville, Felicia, that's Felicia in the back. Uh, I want to make sure you, as you see people, that you know who they are and uh, make a five selection. Uh, Kashemi Imaku, Ima there you go. Some of us don't know the names, but they know the face. So. That's her. Uh, Kashui, that's the deacon in the back. Uh, Hamilton Martinez, right there. Uh, Hamisi Bruno, not here yet. <clears throat> Henry Williams, in the back. You all know, you should all know William by now. Mr. Henry. Irene Birek, I don't see her here. Uh, Irene Werning, there she is. And then Isaac Eugene, Isaac Eugene in the back there. Ismael Kasana, that's Ismael. Like I said, I would love to see some young people in this committee. Uh, Jeanette, who's Jeanette? 
not here. Uh, Chesley Garcia, not here. Uh, Jody Alvarez is not here. Carl Donner, Pastor Carl right there. And then, uh, thank you. Keith Avail on my left. Lisette Alvarez is not here. Manuel, not here. Uh, Maria Romo in the back there. Martha Torres, our new member. Thank you. Melissa Jones. Right there, uh, Noemi and, uh, Hernandez in the back. Can you stand, Noemi, please? Because uh, they can't see you. There she is. I don't think she has uh, uh, served in the nominating committee uh, recently. So, uh, Noemi and uh, Pacific, there he is, uh, Preston. I thought I saw Preston walking in. Not here. Uh, Ramonita standing in the back. Russell Mills is not here. Sharon Campos is not here. Stephanie Romo in the back there. Sunibet is not here. Surya. Don't wave me your hand. <laughs> there she is. That's Surya. Taylor is not here. Uh, Trudy Donna. That's uh, Sister Trudy in the back. Uh, Untoni. Okay, that's Untoni. Uh, Valerie. Valerie in the back. Last but not least is Vio uh, Papa. Is there any name, a member that is not on this list? Nancy, is your name is on there? Okay, let me go through those names. These are the individuals that had served in 2020 and cannot, so don't pick any of those people there on the bottom right. They had served the last time, and that is Anthony, Arturo, Cindy, Hugh, Carmen, L, Nancy, and Patty. Those have served the last time, and they are not uh, serving this year, so don't mark. Now you can mark five names, and then fold it, and put it in the offering, and uh, the uh, sister Juanita, Yes. Mary's name was not on the list. She's not baptized. I'm sorry. Not baptized. We have several of the youth that are not baptized. Only baptized names. So we are hoping that after this we will add more names because we have new seven new people. But now you know who you need to select. And then I will uh, give you the names of the nominating committee before the end of the service. And those are the people that will meet with me next Sabbath at 4 o'clock to select the new officers for our church. Let's prepare for our service.
14 we have a spoon.
and comes from hymnal 783, a new heaven. <coughs> a new heaven and a new earth. I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and, and the first earth and had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, John saw, saw the holy city, city New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared to survive the for us. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no sorrow, no more crying. And there shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he, then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write for these words, are true and faithful. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning and happy Saturday. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We have quite a um, lot of our prayer requests this morning. Amen. The first prayer request, pray for my son's job status. This is from Sister Cindy Williams. Amen. Please keep my family in Puerto Rico in your prayers. Mm. Pray for their uh, safety and their health. That's from uh, Sister Ramanita. <laughs> Please pray for Taylor. We all know that Taylor is at um, rehab right now, so during his uh, physical, um, and then uh, he will be home soon, so keep him in your prayers. Pray for my Auntie Ruthie, who has pneumonia for healing. Pray for my mom to be able to have her license appointment scheduled soon. Pray for Gordon and Amy in Malawi. Uh, Gordon is uh, preaching and putting his sermons on the radio. Pray for uh, permission to be sent to help the, the orphans. Pray for my friend Michelle and her husband to get a truck for their business. Pray for my uh, manager, Omans and her family as she has been accepted into a new position. That is from Sister Carmen. <laughs> Pray for my brother Chris that he continues to improve his health. There's another one that is say, Pray for Taylor that he will be healed and make it home soon. Yeah. Pray for Ralph that he will continue to heal and will be able to have quality time of life. Yeah. Pray for my friend Ray's mother, Carmen. She has the flu and pneumonia. That's from Alta Jones. Please pray for my family and my country, Haiti. That's from Sister Felicia. Pray for uh, Margie Anquiville and uh, Florida's uh, Larissa. That's from Felicia, too. And we all need to pray for each other. Please for, pray for each other for keeping the faith and working together for the Lord. And um, those that have silent prayer, please raise your hand. You can come in the front and uh, kneel in front of the groups with us, or you can kneel where you at.
Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. We come before your throne this morning to give you all the glory and honor because you are worthy to be praised. We come to you this morning, this beautiful Sabbath morning, to praise you. We lift up our hearts and our soul and our mind to worship you and to thank you for all that you have done to us through this year. We're almost at the end of the year and you are not leaving us alone. You always with us, you guide us, you protect us, and you bless us, O oh Lord. So thank you so much. We lift up all our prayer list this morning. You heard them all. Please heal those who are sick. Give them the strength. Give them the hope of life. Give them faith that they can be healed by your Holy Spirit and by the blood of Jesus. We pray, Father, please bless our church family. We pray for each and every one of us. Those who are worshiping us online, we pray for your blessings upon each and every one. We pray for all of our families, Lord that we are blessed. We pray for this country, Lord, that we are serving here in this country. We are all from all different nationality, but we are all one in your name, Jesus Christ. We pray for your um, blessings upon the government and everything that have done in this country, especially around the world too, O oh Lord. Bring all your people together when that glorious morning you come, Jesus, to take us home. We're all going to be there and celebrate it with our loved ones. Please forgive us from our shortcomings and forgive us from our sins. We fall every single moment of our life. So please forgive us. Wash us by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Pray for your uh, servant today, Lord, that he's going to bring the message to you people. Please bless him, anoint him, that he will speak the truth and he will speak the word that he will, you will put in his heart to deliver to you people. Those are our prayer and a silent prayer of each and every one of us. We lift it up to you. That is our prayer in the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Sabbath. Morning. It's now time to give to God his tithes and his offerings. Everything God has given, it also belongs to him. Our church uh, offering this morning is for the church budget. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Amen. Psalms 34, 8. 
We worship God with our resources because this places us in a condition to claim his promises. The Bible is full of promises. Everett R. Storm spent a year and a half counting Bible promises and came up with 7,487 promises made by God to humankind. God's promises have three characteristics. They are true. All can claim them, and they are often conditional. Paul wrote about his confidence in God's promises. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. 2 Corinthians 1.20 When God says yes, nobody can say no. Several are conditional to faith and obedience as two essential requisites about obedience. Ellen G. White writes, All who obey him may with confidence claim the fulfillment of his promises. An incident in life of Fred Steerwalt, a farmer from Hollister, California, shows the value of obedience in claiming God's promises. One afternoon, Fred observed that army, army beetles had covered his field. Immediately, he realized the disastrous outcome awaiting. These small creatures eat until there is nothing green left. Feeling powerless, he had an insightful conversation with his daughter, Helen. Helen asked, Daddy, you pay your tithe, don't you? Yes, he replied. Then why not ask God to keep his promise and drive the beetles away? Convinced by these words, they knelt and prayed, claiming the promise of Malachi 3, 10, and 11. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops, and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it is ripe. Right after praying, they saw a cloud of blackbirds descending on their fields. The blackbirds remained for a short time, but there wasn't a beetle left when they flew away. Amen. God has a heaven full of blessing for those who will cooperate with him. This week, as we worship with our tithe and regular offerings, we are placing ourselves in a position to claim his promises. Lord, we are thankful for your promises of spiritual and temporal blessings. We claim them over our lives. Remove all doubts and unfaithfulness that could be obstacles. Uh, let us remember this. And also, just a small note, for those who have already, uh, we ask that you, as you put in your tithes and offerings to also put in your nominating committee forms, submissions into the offering plate. Remember this as the deacons come forth. <laughs>
this.
they keep talking about my children's story, and today I decided to do a nature nugget <laughs> instead. So I hope you're not too disappointed. But I did get permission, Mr. Tony. Where are you? There you are. He gave me permission, so if you, you don't like it, get him. <laughs> this morning, I'm going to start with, hope I can work this. Maybe it's the other way we go. There we go. That's the world's largest bird. And he can't fly, and I am so thankful because if he did a doo-doo over your head, you'd have a time of it, wouldn't you? He can't fly, but he's the biggest bird. He's called an ostrich, and he's the fastest runner of all birds. He can go up to 43 miles an hour. 43, that's pretty good. Now, he can weigh from 140 pounds, clear up to 280 pounds. He lives 30 to 40 years. And he stands seven to nine feet tall. That's taller than our basketball player, some of them, huh? Now, let's go on to the next one. Ah, we got it. This is the world's smallest bird. It's called a bee hummingbird. And they call it a bee hummingbird because <laughs> he's so tiny, he, he's only this big. That's all. But they say when he's flying, he looks like a bee flying. So they call him a bee hummingbird. And he can live seven to 10 years, and he can fly 25 to 30 miles an hour. Pretty good for a little guy, huh? Okay, the next one, you're going to love this one. Oh, went the wrong way. That's called a, the largest mammal. Where did Al go? And Tony? Tony, I need some help. And Al, it'll take two of you. I'm actually going to grab a hold of one hand. Far as you can. Going to make it to the side. Keep going. Now that wire is 50 feet long, but Mr. Blue Whale is a hundred feet long. So two of these wires, and that's how big he is. Can you imagine meeting him in the ocean? <laughs> One good thing, thank you so much. One good thing about him, he doesn't eat people or big fish or anything. He eats little tiny things like creel that's in the ocean or little, um, um, uh -huh. Little tiny things, yeah, little teeny tiny things. He's got <clears throat> things that go up and down his mouth. I don't have a picture of that. Anyways, he opens up that mouth and all the water comes in and he gets a great big belly full of water and he pushes it out. But all the little animals stay inside. I thought he was, he was a cool guy. Now, Mr. Mr. Blue Whale, he lives 80 to 90 years, and his tongue, just his tongue, weighs more than an elephant. That's pretty big, isn't it? Now, he makes clicking noises when he wants to be heard or when he wants to call a girlfriend or a boyfriend. He goes, but it is so loud, it's louder than a jet engine. Can you imagine? It can be heard a thousand miles away in the, underneath the waters and stuff. Now, there is my flicker. We'll get on to this sooner or later. 
Now, you think he's cute? I thought he was, too. I had to have him in here. He's called a pygmy marmoset monkey, or a finger monkey, because see, you can see he's on a finger. That's how big he gets. Four to six inches, about like this, is all. But he can jump 16 feet in the air. Pretty big, huh? He eats only tree sap. Once a great while, a little bug. Okay, next one I've got. How you like him? I think he looks a little bit like Jimmy Durante. <laughs> of course, only us older people would know Jimmy Durante. This this guy, he's found all over the world, all over in the country. No, no, I lost him. Anyway, he's um. He's a, called a proboscis monkey. Now, a proboscis is for the nose, as you can see. He's uh, only found in South America. I thought he was kind of cute. Of course, I'm prejudiced towards people with bigger noses <laughs> for some reason. Now, do you think he's an ugly monkey? Yeah, kind of homely, and he got a squashed in face. Yeah. I, I, I kind of like monkeys, so I had a lot of them on here. <laughs> he's called a black snub nosed monkey, and he's found only in China. Only lives in China, way up in the mountains, so he spurs real, real thick. Now, here's an emperor Cameron. I like his mustache. <laughs> hey, Tony, you gonna try that one? Yep. <laughs> He's small, he only weighs a pound, and he lives 10 to 20 years, and he stands 9 to 10 feet tall. Lives in the rainforest. Here's a howler monkey. Now, in the mornings, these monkeys get up and they howl. And their, their, their howl sounds like a lion's roar. Can you imagine? Roar! He can be heard up to three miles away, their roar. And they weigh about 15 to 30 pounds. This is a Yukari monkey. He has a bit of a problem with his hair, just a little bit. But I thought he was a little different, a little red-faced. He, uh, he sleep. He likes to sleep. You know, when I go to sleep, I don't want anybody around me. But when the Kikari monkey goes to sleep, they get in groups of 50 to 200 monkeys. Now, I sure do hope some of them don't snore. Now this is the orangutan monkey. He's, he's really a pretty good sized guy. Um, he, he's called the man of the forest and he stands four to five feet tall. He can be right up here. He weighs about 75 to 180 pounds and he lives 30 to 40 years and he spends 90% of his day in the trees. Only 10% of the day does he go on the on the ground. Now I had to get away from the monkeys because, you know, some of us have to go too much like them. So we brought in the lions. Aren't they pretty? Aren't they pretty? 15 to 16 years they live. And they go from 280 pounds to 420 pounds. And their roar can be heard five miles away. Here's African elephants. Elephants! Yes, an African elephant. Can you see the big ears on them? Big ears. Yep. <laughs> and they go 10 foot tall, 60 to 70 years, and their ear alone can be five foot. They have 40,000 muscles in their nose. We only have 700. That's a lot of difference, isn't it? Now here is an Asian elephant. He's got little ears and he's got one more toenail than an African elephant. Just one more toenail. Now 
here. Something special. Look. Go back. There he is. We had to put these in here because we didn't want anybody upset. But I wanted to ask you, does anybody know how many kinds of dogs there is in the world? How many different kinds? 222. That's pretty good. So now, how many cats are there in the world? <laughs> Not how many cats. I said that wrong. But how many different varieties, different kinds of breeds? Oh, there's only 400. So the dogs really beat them out. Did you like the nature story? Yeah. You know, I love nature. Jesus gave us nature to learn things from. So sometimes I'm going to bring you nature stories instead of regular stories, okay? Y'all being good and patient with me. Thank you very much. Back is good now. <laughs>
never bear you unless you dash your foot against the stone and he will raise you up on eagle's wings bear you on the breath of dawn make you to shine like the sun and hold you in his hand To his angels, he's given the command to guard you in all of your ways. Upon their hands, they will bear you up, unless you dash your foot against a stone. He will hold you up, make you shine like the sun, and have you in the palms of his hands. Thank you, Brother Carlos. Appreciate that. Good message. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Those of you that are online, we also want to say good morning and happy Sabbath to you. It would be nice if you were here, but as long as you're joining us, joining us from where you are, it's always a pleasure and a blessing to all worship together. I'd like for you to look around. Just take a look around. See what you think. <clears throat> how blessed we are. It seems like uh, that we are at the point as we reach the end of the year that we're going to need more chairs. It is an amen. It is an amen. And I often said this. When you are not here, we missed you, and I personally missed you. And the reason why I missed you is because I do a mental count. Everyone in our church is in my mental. I don't have to look at a list. I count everyone, every members, by memories. And I can tell who is missing and who is not here. So I want to uh, extend a very warm welcome to all our uh, members, regular members here in the church, as well as those of you that are watching online, as well as those that are joining us, not quite members yet, like Richard in the back. Richard, can you put up your hand? That's Richard. Amen. Road. And I bet you have not paid attention to Richard. Richard and his wife, Mercy, have been attending our meetings, and they have chosen to 
join our church. Amen. So they will be added to one of the elders. I have been working on the elders list uh, for visitation and so far we have 10 uh, families per elders. 10. So we are blessed we're growing. And for those of you that are uh, not yet made up your mind, like my brother. I have a younger brother here fighting. It's right there. Amen. He's joining us and we hope that uh, soon he will also be a member of our church. And believe me or not, he has 20 to come. 20. The, the children, grandchildren. If they all come here, we're going to fill this side by the fires. <laughs> then everyone has to move. <laughs> all right. And also, I noticed that we have uh, Loretta. Loretta is over there. That is uh, sister, Cas I mean, brother Casper's. Uh, uh, sister-in-law, she has been coming. I have not asked her if she liked our church because I know she has been coming because she liked our church. So, yeah. And uh, Loretta, who is that sitting next to you? That's Annie. Yeah, Annie. That's one person I haven't got any information yet. Uh, Sister Ramonita, Annie. So I would like to get her information to add her name on one of the visiting elders next week. Next week you will get a list of who you are assigned to, which elders you are assigned to. And then that elder will be calling you, visiting with you, and if you have any need or any uh, help, you contact that elder. In that way, everything is organized, everything is uh, under uh, control, and that no one will be missed. Now, I have a card here that uh, was given to me. I know this uh, uh, person has been here. Uh, not sure if this is the same person. Uh, the uh, Santa Seas families are they here. Would you mind standing? Amen. 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 And you're where you're coming from? New Jersey. New Jersey. We're open and to reside here. I'm sorry? We're open to reside in Congress. Amen. Amen. We're moving. Amen. Welcome to Emmanuel. Did you receive the welcome gift? Yes, we did. Amen. Praise Amen. Lord. Welcome to Emmanuel. Thank you. Look forward to uh, seeing you again and work, work with you. Thank you. God bless you. All right. And then I have uh, Mr. Fry. Reggie Fry, can you stand for a minute? Reggie is a former member of our church. One of the original. Uh, one of the original, all right. Uh, Reggie uh, was uh, serving as an elder in our church before they left, and it's good to see him again. Amen. We hope that he will decide to join us again. Amen. Maria, I would like for you to introduce your brother. Mario has been here many times and has not decided yet. I don't know what's taking so long, but I would love to have him as a member of our church. Now, I know one of our um, member, Fortai, you want to introduce your mother-in-law? Fortai. Stand up, I can't hear you.
Yeah, that's a Sina. Sina uh, from uh, Fort Hood and uh, Kailin. We're happy that you join us and uh, also visiting the new baby. So we are thankful and we praise the Lord for the new addition to our church, right, Ty? Amen. 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 All right, that's my sermon. <laughs> it's time to go. Again, it is a privilege and a blessing to see out there and realize that the church is filling up. That means we're doing something. Not just one or two people, but we're doing something. I spoke with one of the elder uh, uh, pastor locally, and he said that it's been hard to bring members or new people to the church. Uh, he, they have just finished their evangelism, and only one has, been, uh, has joined the church. We have been blessed with five commitments. Two have already been incorporated in our uh, church. Thank you. Uh, three are still making the decisions. And so if you can remember them in your prayers, they are still in the valley of decision to join the church. So please pray for those souls that have come to the meetings and then also will be joining the church. So here is the nominating committee that will meet with me next uh, Sabbath afternoon at 4 o'clock. Chris Romo, Surya Fayu, Vio Papa Afalava, Melissa Jones, Stephanie Romo. Two, three, four, five. Uh, I needed seven. I only have five. On the back. On the back. Oh. On the back. I'm sorry. Okay. It's uh, Melissa, Chris, Stephanie, uh, Surya, Vio, and the alternates are Brandon Jones and Hamilton Martinez. Uh, Brandon. Will you be able to serve since you are at the church? All right, so those are the nominating committees. Normally, we don't allow a couple, a husband and a wife, but we allow two members of a family if, if they are uh, elected. So keep that in mind. I will ring you this week just to remind you of your responsibility for electing the new officers 2023 uh, and 2024. <clears throat> Let's pray. Dear Lord and loving kind Heavenly Father, we are blessed and almost to the point of speechless for what you have done for our church this year. We want to thank you for additions to our church, and we ask that you bless them, those that are still in the valley of decisions, help them and bless them, dear Lord. As we open your word this morning, we ask that you help me and that you speak through me that your people, our visitors, 
those that are joining us online, as well as our youth and our children, will be blessed by your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The year was 1992. February was the month. I returned from a trip to New Zealand and received an assignment from the education department that I have a new assignment of where to teach. I look at the name of the village, it's not one, the one that I like. So I went to the education department and, and asked them if I can have another assignment somewhere else besides this village. And they said, no, that's your assignment. So I said to the lady, but I don't like it, I don't want it. She said, if you don't like it, and if you don't want it, find another job. I said, good. I'll do that. So that same week, my mind was uh, rolling and trying to figure out what am I going to do now. Because I don't want to go there, that village, to teach, and I don't, they told me that was it. <clears throat> so a thought came to my mind that I am going to somewhere else to find a job. I went to my aunt that I stayed with, and I told her, uh, Aunt, I'm living. She said, where are you going? I said, American Samoa. She took some time to think and absorb it, and then she said, why? And I said, because I want to. So I did. I moved to American Samoa February. 1992, found a job there, a teaching job, and I taught there under Mr. Falava's dad. Uh, uh, Mr. Falava's dad was a vice uh, principal there, so I worked for him and with him as a teacher in American Samoa. After two years, I was not happy, I was not satisfied, pain was nothing. So I went to Mr. Flava and I said, I'm leaving. He said, where are you going? To America. America? You're not kidding me. I said, no. He said, why? I said, because I want to. You see, Somewhere, somehow, in life, this question that I am asking, where are you going, as part of our message this morning, is often asked to you by someone. If it's not your children, your spouse, it could be someone else. They want to know, but there are four reasons why those people or the people ask that question. Where are you going? Number one, they ask that question because they want to know. Number two, it's because they are concerned that you're leaving. Number three, it's because they're nosy. They want to know your business. And then number four is because they love you. 
We have read in our responsive reading from the book of Revelation, chapter, chapter 21, just the paraphrase of what chapter 21 is. And so if you have your Bible, turn to Revelation 21, because most of what I'm going to talk about is from that chapter. Revelation ch chapter 21. The book, the back of the hymnal is just briefly summarizing it or paraphrasing it, but not totally what I want to use this morning. John was taken to heaven. He was shown what heaven looked like. And he was amazed, he was so surprised how beautiful he heaven was. And so in the chapter 21 of Revelation, he was told to write this, and here we go. John said, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. It's amazing. This is before it was brought down to, to our world. He said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. The first heaven and the first earth is where we are now. The heaven is where we see the stars and where the planes are flying. First, from the beginning when God created. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. The New Jerusalem that will come down, has not come down, but will come down from heaven. The old earth passed away, the old heaven passed away, the new heaven is coming down. He said, prepared for a pride adorned for her husband. This is comparing it to a marriage. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. Where God dwells is being with men. Remember, he's talking about the future. What he saw in heaven that will take place on earth. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell, he meaning God. And God will dwell with them, who are them? His people, you and I, if you make it, if you're going to be there, God is going to be right there. So that should raise a question in your mind. Where are you going? And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Isn't that going to be something? Amen. Wipe away all tears. God himself will do that job. God will wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more Death, praise the Lord. Amen. Something that we are afraid of. We don't want to die because we love our job. 
We don't want to die because we love our families. We don't want to die because we love life. We love what we see. We love what we know. Unfortunately, the time will come that you have by no choice. Go. But where are you going? No more crying. No more crying. Neither sorrow, neither shall be any more pain. I know you're sitting there, perhaps some of you are in pain. That is not going to happen in heaven. The home that Christ himself said, I go and prepare a place for you, a special place. And I will come again to receive you unto myself, that where I am, you may be. Did you hear that? No guarantee that where I am, that you may be, meaning you are not guarantee heaven. But it is so nice, so good to know what will take place in heaven when we get there. Unfortunately, those of you that will not be there, we won't, you won't experience it. Where are you going? For me, I'm going home. Where I belong. Heaven. I go home. I'm going home. No more crying, no more sorrow, no more tears, no more pain. For the former things are passed away. The moment that we accept Jesus Christ and are waiting for his coming, the moment that we saw it, we see him coming, the moment that we are renewed. Having a new body. That's what Paul said in 1 Corinthians. No more worried about anything in life. All you look forward to is to enjoy the heaven. And even if we look at it, John took the time to explain how big the, the, the new heaven is, the, the new city, and how wide it is, and even the, the cover of the city is covered with gold. What an amazing thing. John said, and he said unto me, it is done. My work is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water, a of life freely. It, go, when it goes on. Here is what I want to uh, share with you. I was listening to Pastor uh, Warren, Rick Warren. I know most of you, or some of you have, have uh, experienced or heard uh, uh, Pastor Rick Warren, one of the very uh, known uh, pastor on the air. But here is what he said that caught my attention. Pastor Warren said, and I want to share with you, or I quote, he said, You don't 
longer have to do good to go to heaven. Unquote. But there is a statement that followed that I'll share with you later. He said, if you're thinking of heaven, if you're thinking of going home, you don't have to do good to get there. That contradicts the Bible. It contradicts what Paul said. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 11, I'll just go there for, for your information. Why I said it contradict what the Bible said in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 11. And this is what Paul said. Know we not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? It's a question. Do you know that the unrighteous will not enter heaven? Be not deceived, neither, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. Anyone knows what effeminate is? This is King James. It's men loving men. What do you call it? They will not make it to heaven. So Paul gave, gave us the list of those that will not be there, nor abuses of themselves with mankind. Verse 10. Nor thieves, those that steal, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor, I would like to use a different translation. Anyone has an NIV? What do you have, Carmen? Uh, yeah, can you read there for us? No, Stand up. It's not, it's not in that one. Sorry. Uh, NID? What is it? It's New King James. No, I want an NID or something. Yeah, else. Okay. Nancy? Yes. Oh. Okay. NID. This is verse 10. I want to verse, verse 10 now. That's verse 10? Yes. Okay, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor greedy, greedy won't make it to heaven? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh no. Oh, that's not a good list. Drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers. What is a swindler? Swinging with inherit will inherit the kingdom of God. Next one, verse 11. And that is what some of you were. Some of you were. So that means everyone that is in here this morning and from now on will make it to heaven. Should I say that? Amen. Amen. Now, if you're not sure, it's your fault. <laughs> if you're not going to make it there, it's your decision. But it's very clear. And I'll continue on. You were justified in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. You were forgiven. Whatever the past has, uh, was, it's gone. And don't allow the devil to keep playing in your mind. You have been forgiven and so forth 
You are ready for heaven. You know, I attended the church in All Nation two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and the special music person that was there sang a song that I am familiar with. And the words of that song touched me. It touched me to the point that I really am looking forward to heaven. And so if you ask me where I am going, I am going this time, not America, not Samoa, not where, I'm going to heaven. Amen. What about you? Amen. Are you ready for heaven? Yes. Heaven is where we belong. It's time that we prepare ourselves. It's time that we prepare from early morning to late night, or 24-7 if you can. You know, there's also a song that uh, I, I kind of remember that as you go, bring someone along. And I believe that we are responsible for everyone that we know in life. So I'm going to ask Sister Michelle to come. And while she sings that song, I want you to listen to the words. Make a decision as she's singing. And after she sang it, I'd like for you or if you want to stand while she sings it, while she sings, you may do that. I am going home.
stay there for a minute. Apparently, some of you are not sure. Let me share with you what the spirit of prophecy said. There are some who are seeking, always seeking, for a goodly pearl. But they do not make an entire surrender of their wrong habits. They do not die to self, so Christ may live in them. Therefore, they do not and will not find the precious pearl. Amen. That's from the book of Selected Message, yes. book one, page 399. Yes. Ellen White said, our daily consecration to God brings peace and rest. Christ will clothe them with his righteousness. In closing, the Desire of Ages, page 466, she said this. In the work of redemption, there is no combustion. There is no force. No external force is used. But under the influence of the Spirit of God, man is left free to choose whom will serve. Play that last part, second stanza. Henry, please. I don't want to leave you without making a commitment to yourself and to Jesus. If you're not making a commitment to this morning and today, you are telling God you are not so sure. I am not so sure if I will make it to heaven. Home. Amen. We are looking forward to that day, Lord. 
we will travel with you home. We will be in heaven, observing, enjoying, and fellowshipping with all others, and especially with you, Lord, and Jesus Christ. Amen. Bless our church. Everyone that has made a choice this morning, bless them. Encourage them. Protect them, dear Lord, that we won't fall again. Bless us all. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Remain standing as we sing our closing hymn. Two hundred and sixteen. Every moment, 
realizing how wonderful things are going for each one of us. Please bless each one in this place. Don't let no one leave with a blessing and that burning charcoal in the hearts of the second coming, Lord. You know, those ones that are a little afar from, the, from us, those ones that are in the internet hearing these words, let them keep it in mind, Lord. Let them have the worry to search you every single day, Lord, until you come the second time. Again, Lord, thank you for so many beautiful things and for the hope of your second coming. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen.